I'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. So we're here in Salt Ponds Marina in Hampton, Virginia. We have to convert our boat out of ICW mode and back into ocean sailing Chesapeake mode. What is that going to entail? What, what are the differences? Well, first off, our monitor way back there, it's been disconnected because we're in the ICW and we, or we were in the ICW and you can't really use a monitor in there. You, everything, you're just constantly steering. So there's no point in setting a self steering because you're gonna change course in two seconds. So Wendy steered us like a champ all through the bay, across the ocean, like everything. She's amazing, but can't really use her in the ICW because there isn't the seaway to sail. So we disconnected her, we had her set out of the way that we had more space in the cockpit. Second thing, that funky bench because we're no longer in the ICW I don't have to sit at the helm and look straight ahead for hours on end going down a super narrow channel we're gonna be out in the bay and we're gonna be sailing again and lastly the panels so these solar panels are right there ah they give us a lot of power it's an extra 400 watts we're gonna take away the solar panels from the foredeck that is going to then allow us to put up our jib Josh again so that he can fly and we can be full sail once again. We'll also be able to fly our drifter, our light air sail. We're just gonna go back to how we used to be out in the ocean, which was just 300 watts total. That's all the power that we had. And that sufficed for about four years. So we had no issues at all until we hit the ICW where we were motoring all the time and therefore need more power. I mean, when we left the bay, we actually had 50 watts. So this 300 watts that we have on the back is a huge boost. And then we have another close to 600 and some watts on the Bimini. So yeah, I think we'll be okay. So the wind vane has these control lines over here and they have to go to the wheel. It's all you gotta do to get it hooked up again. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. This every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. So hold me tight through the night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two. Josh rigged up, but we have a problem. Josh's winch is not working. So it spins in both directions, which is nice, but it, the poles aren't engaging, so therefore it's not locking and holding. So I gotta open it up, clean it out, ungunk it, and get those poles working again. So this is the problem. This paw is good, it snaps back real quickly. This one's a little sluggish. So I gotta clean it up and make it not be sluggish. So the paw, it's a little one-way valve. And when you turn your winch and you hear that clicking, it's your paws that are clicking. So you see, it goes one way and it locks the other. Now, if your paws get stuck and they're down and they won't open up, then it can go forward and backwards. And that was the issue we were having. We were able to turn the winch one way, but the winch would spin the other way. So all it was was the poles were a little dirty. Now, as you guys know, I lubricate my winches with bike chain lube, which is not the correct thing to use. You're supposed to use Lumar winch grease. The problem is Lumar winch grease holds all sorts of funk and gunk and just nasty stuff. 
and then every year you have to open your winch up, do this, take out all the old grease, put in new grease, put it all back together. If you do chain lube like I've been doing for 10 years, you open it up, you drip some new lube in, you close it up and you're done. You don't have to do all this work. Now, 10 years later, how many winches do we have? Like 14 or something? One need me to open it up and check the paws and work them a little. So, you know, choices you make. So if you're at home and have access to all the materials and everything you could need, what you wanna do in this situation is get a bucket, fill it with diesel, and put all these parts in it and just let it soak for a couple weeks. All the gunk's gonna get loosened up and then you take a toothbrush and you clean it all and you make it spotless, just absolutely gorgeous. Once you get everything cleaned up, then you wanna take new winch grease and grease everything up and put it back together. Now, the reason you need to take out the old grease when you put in the new one is if it starts to get dry, the pawls get stuck. And then this can turn in both directions, which it's not supposed to do. So in my situation, since I don't have access or time to let something sit in a bucket for a couple weeks because we're going sailing tomorrow and this winch needs to be operational, what I'm gonna be using is what we have on hand, which is some WD-40 and uh, some prayers. We're gonna be praying. So winches break in one of two ways. And depending how it breaks is how easy the fix is gonna be. So one way they break is how ours was. Spins in both directions. Those are really easy to fix. So those are simply caused by the pawls getting stuck. So you just open them up, find the pawls, figure out which one's not moving, and then make it move. That's all it is. The ones that won't spin, those are trickier to fix because those, ah, they're seized and hopefully you can get it apart because it might be seized to the bell and then, good poopy Jerry. It might be seized to the bell and with those, you can't even open them to get in to fix them. Those get really, really tricky. So as long as your winch is able to spin, you're good. Thankfully, these little buggers found some weak points in our fiberglass and they decided to show me how weak this area was by ripping apart everything to expose all the little bubbles and voids that were in the layup of the hall. Thanks! So now we're gonna fix that. Now since the birds did all the hard work of getting all the loose little bits out and only leaving the very strong fiberglass that wouldn't rip off with their beaks, I'm just going to use some fairing compound to fill the voids because the voids, thankfully, are small. Present, but small. Step one to fix this is to get yourself some cardboard that you can mix your epoxy on. We ordered a pizza. It was delicious. Now we're going to use the box. The second step is to take Total Boat fairing epoxy and mix it up on the cardboard. There's a yellow and a blue. You mix equal parts until you get green. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man, passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up. So now we're going to take our green fairing compound and just pick it up and smear it on to all those holes. Now this is why the knife, because the knife is going to 
fit over everything and that means that it's not going to go into the voids but it will match the contour of the outside of the hall so that means that it automatically fares everything for you right as you do it so it makes a lot makes everything a lot easier all right now we're just going to wipe up any excess and refill any voids that we picked out while wiping off any excess once that finishes curing, then we'll hit it with some sandpaper, and then later, much later, probably never, but most likely much later, we will paint it. In all honesty, that'll probably get painted next time we repaint the deck, because while the epoxy isn't producing all these horrible toxic fumes that'll kill these birds, the paint would. So we can't paint with the birds on board, and we kind of always have the birds on board, so we need to figure out some babysitting for the birds, that way we can then tackle this. Well, here we are. <laughs> it's raining. So Maddie's getting groceries. Hopefully she's still inside and hopefully she's done after this passes because it's a lot of rain. The good part is I need to wash the deck and put water in the tank. So those are the last two things I need to do before we can head out of here. And this is helping wash the deck. This is going to get all the dirt nice and loose so then when I hit it with the hose, it should all come off a lot easier. having an excellent stay here in Salt Ponds. So Salt Ponds and South Hall, they're two different marinas but they're owned by the same owner and Salt Pond was full so he let us stay over here in uh, South Hall but we get the dinghy back and forth, we get to use you know the pool, the gym, all the facilities in either marina. It's It's been great here and it's just so protected. So yesterday while we were working here there was a really nasty storm that came through the Chesapeake and we were completely oblivious. It was a little windy in here, but that's all. We didn't realize it was that bad because it's so protected in here. It's just great. This is absolutely amazing. We got Josh up, Wendy's steering us. It's, oh, it's like good old times being out in the ocean. We're in the bay, but there's that gentle motion. We're on their sail, we have no motor going. I love it. There's such a nice, just a steady breeze. So in the Chesapeake, it tends to blow really nicely in the morning and then die down in the afternoon. 
and then after that you get thunderstorms and all sorts of fun stuff. This is just in the summer. We hope to be there before 2 because 2 is when the wind stops. We did a live video where we talked about what is the ultimate cruising boat. Well, the goal of that video is to point out that there is no perfect cruising boat. That every boat has problems. Boats are just a series of compromises that somehow float. When we were making the video, we are talking about, oh, we wish, you know, we had this, or we had that, or we had the other. You can't be moving and cruising if you're also doing all of these projects. So our thought was, well, we don't have time to be doing those. That's We just hadn't even considered it because we just plum didn't have the time to do it. I had all these dream things I wish Wisdom had, but just no time to make those dreams a reality while we were making all our other dreams a reality of traveling and going across the Atlantic. Well, we're coming back to Baltimore. We're going to be here for a while and we're going to do all of those things that we wish Wisdom had. But the good thing is, in the end, we'll have our dream boat. And then we can go cruising on that again. Come on, you can do it. Oh, Charlie. Chesapeake Bay and we are full sail and it is awesome. I am so excited. The bay is such a wonderful place to sail and it's perfect weather for the introduction today. It's nice and cool outside. We've got steady winds and we're not heeled over way, way too much. So it's, it's a comfortable ride and everything is great. Chesapeake Bay is kind of famous for lighthouses. That one was our first one we've come across thus far, and that was the Wolf Trap Lighthouse. Really fun to see our first lighthouse. These are all very historic and old. Incidentally, as things work, it was the last lighthouse we saw in the Chesapeake before uh, leaving to go cruising outside our home waters, and so it's always fun to revisit these little landmarks. Was I drinking, looking for the next thing? I couldn't really settle down. Always on the run, I didn't want to slow down. But baby, then you came around. Yeah, you came around. No, I Okay, so we're coming in to Deltaville, and it's this awesome little tiny town with a bunch of marinas and great anchorages, but getting in is tricky. When you come in, it's just all these super tight right angle turns, and there's no leeway. It's a super narrow channel, and we're going to be doing that under sail. Today has been a fantastic day of sailing. It felt so good to just have a broad reach all the way here. The winds did die down quite a bit from the beginning. We were really going in the beginning, uh, which was fun, but I, it was kind of nice that they died down later. We had a little bit more of a pleasant ride. <laughs> so we got a good sail in today. It's about 30 miles that we made, and 
We're excited to just drop anchor tonight, meet one of you guys. We're going to meet a follower there in uh, Deltaville, which we're excited about. And then tomorrow we continue on. <laughs> Anchors down here in Deltaville. Yay, a successful day. We had an awesome time today. It was so fun, like I said, to get Josh our jib up. Man, really felt like real sailing because it was. Anyway, we're gonna enjoy a nice dinner with our new friends and get some shut eye because tomorrow we got another exciting sail ahead of us to Smith Island. A lot of people tout Regen as being an amazing thing for electric motor, and yes. It's a little bit of work to get him set up, but Dill is made for light wind. And we're gonna do it on a tiny, tight little budget because we don't have a lot of money. We just crossed into Maryland. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. I can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.